In this video, we're going to be breaking down the carrier heat pump lineup and what you should know. We're going to be going through the different models that are available. We're going to be going through the tax credits. We're going to be talking about SEER 2 ratings, what the difference is between SEER 2 and SEER 1, how that's measured, why it even matters. And we're going to talk about just everything you should know if you're in the market for a heat pump right now, because there's a lot of uh, new changes that have happened with heat pumps. They change every year, but heat pumps, the technology, it varies from market to market and climate to climate, right? The same heat pump that you're going to use in a a very cold climate is not the same heat pump that you're going to want to use in a very hot climate in a place like Phoenix. For example, we use different heat pumps when we're working down there than when we're installing a heat pump in Denver, Colorado, which is another market that we serve. And so that's something that you want to consider, but we're going to talk about all that and more in this video. And if you're tuning into this channel for the first time, please, for the algorithm, make sure you smash that like button and consider subscribing to the channel if you get value from this content. We put out daily and weekly content on how you can get the best HVAC for your home. So if you find this content helpful, it's much appreciated. It takes a lot of energy to uh, put these together. As you can see, we go through a lot of data and like to cover that. And so if you find this content helpful, again, it's a huge help. If you find it unhelpful, hey, you can throw it a thumbs down. That's fine too. And don't subscribe, but we'll try to bring as much value as possible. And if you have a question or comment, please post it in the comment section below. We do try to respond to all comments. Let us know what project you're working on, you know, because if you include information like your region, your climate, the type of system you're considering and what questions you have, we'll always try to answer those and get back to you quickly as possible and provide you with any feedback on how you can get the best HVAC for your particular situation. So that being said, let's talk about the heat pump lineups. And before we dive into the carrier heat pumps, now I have all carrier heat pumps kind of pulled up on my screen right now so we can go through these individually, but we're going to talk about just kind of the basic overview of the types of heat pumps that you can get for any specific system now, and or for any specific manufacturer. Every manufacturer for the most part, with the exception of a few of the budget manufacturers that maybe only offer one or two models models, you're going to have basically three different categories. You're going to have a single stage system, a multi-stage system, or a variable speed system. And those three categories will have different levels within them of a range of efficiency, a range of SEER ratings. SEER and EAR and HSPF2 are the ratings that are uh, valid now, and we'll explain what all that means. But the bottom line is that basically the difference between a single stage system or a two stage system or a variable speed system is kind of like what it sounds like in the title. A single stage system is either on or it's off. It has one stage of heating or one stage of cooling. A two stage system, same thing. It has two stages of heating and cooling. And a variable speed system has, in theory, infinite stages. But really, the way that they work is they'll have oftentimes several hundred stages because they ramp up in you know one percent or less increments. So they're ramping up slowly along a continuum. The same way that your car motor works. And kind of how I like to explain it is that when your car goes from a thousand RPMs to six thousand RPMs, it actually is technically going from 1,000 RPMs to 1,001 RPMs to 1,002 RPMs to one, all the way up to 6,000, except when you gun it, it all happens in a split second. But along the way, it's moving along the continuum. The same thing's happening in an inverter system, and that's how they achieve that added efficiency. Because imagine if your car could only go 1,000 RPMs or 6,000 RPMs, and it just went, dur, dur, you know, up and down all over the place. It'd be super jerky, very uncomfortable, kind of like most people's air conditioners, right? So a basic single stage system is going to be a little bit less comfortable because of that. And it's also going to be a little bit noisier, whereas the, some of the benefits of the variable speed systems or the multi-stage systems is that they're going to be quieter. They're also going to be a little bit more efficient. And that's achieved through staging and then also achieved through the comfort factor is achieved because the system's quieter because it's not ramping up to 100% capacity every time it kicks on. So that being said, now that you understand the three basic lineups in any product lineup, let's talk about what is available from care and what this means. And this brochure right here is something, if you have a carrier, you know, dealer, this is something that you're working with that they should have or will have. And this is basically all the different product lines. You have your comfort series, you have your performance series, and then you have your infinity series. Now an infinity system, these are basically your inverter heat pump options. You can see the, the SEER 2 data is anywhere between 22 and 19.5. HSPF 2 data on these particular systems ranges between 9 and 11. Seven. This says it's technically a five stage variable speed system with capacity that ranges from 25 to 100%. So as you can see, that variable speed system, it's technically a multi-stage system, but this is a full variable speed system. So this is inverter driven. Now the, in this performance series, this is also an inverter driven system. And this is the 38 Mira. We'll talk about this one in a second and where we like it or where this particular system would work well in terms of climates. And then you can see here in the performance series, this is where some of the two stage systems are. And then the rest of the systems are single stage systems. 
items. Now, if you look, one of the things you'll notice when you go down the, the line or the lineup, you have decibel ratings down here of how they how loud they are when they're operating. So these are all around 70 decibels, except when you get to the the 38 Mira, as well as these other Infinity systems, the decibel rating drops substantially. So you're talking 54 decibels here, 55, 51 decibels. Extremely quiet system. And the Mura that I just mentioned is this guy right here, the 38 Mura. This is a, a system that is a side discharge heat pump. These systems tend to be a little bit quieter, actually, just in general. This is going to vary from to manufacturer, but they tend to be quieter than their, you know, traditional box style heat pump counterparts like this, you know, Performance, which is a two-stage system, or even the Infinity Variable Speed heat pump. Typically, those side discharge systems are going to be a little bit quieter. And then one thing that I want to point out here is we'll kind of start by talking about some of these tax credits that are on the table. Now, if you're not familiar with the heat pump tax credit that's available, for air source heat pumps, there's a $2,000 tax credit up to 30% of the project cost, and it varies from region. So if you're in a northern climate, you're going to have a different set of heat pumps that qualify. So all these blue states like Colorado or Kansas or anywhere where it's cold, hey, those have a different set of heat pumps that qualify. And when you look at, you know, southern orange states are going to be states that are geared more towards a cooling aspect. So, and the way that you can navigate this site, if you go to energystar.gov, which we can link in the product description or in the YouTube description for you, if you go down here, you can select heat pumps ducted if you're looking for a ducted heat pump. And then you can literally select the manufacturers that you're considering. So if you're considering Daikin, you can type in Daikin. If you're considering train, you can type in train, carrier, whatever. For the purpose of this video, we're going to go through the carrier data. And then you can literally find out what qualifies in your area based on whether or not it's a cold climate or just a basic tax credit eligible heat pump. As you can see, like this 18 VS heat pump, it says it's tax credit eligible, but it does not say cold climate or have that designation. So it's not going to qualify in those cold weather environments. But this carrier 38 M series does qualify as a cold climate heat pump. And a lot of these side discharge systems will qualify. Daikin have a fit heat pump that qualifies in cold climates. And then they have one that is better for hotter climates. And that's just because that's the way that system is designed. But that's how I like to use the the this Energy Star site because it gives you kind of the nitty gritty on you know what the SEER 2 rating is, what the EER rating is, which I don't care so much about on inverter systems. And uh, what the HSPF2 rating is, which is a reflection of how it's going to perform in those colder climates and those colder weathers. So that means that let's, now that you have an understanding of how that tax credit works, and we've gone through kind of the basic, you know, this is your comfort series and your performance series is going to be a lot of single stage systems. This SEER 2 rating, what SEER stands for is seasonal energy efficiency ratio. And that rating, like I said, is more geared towards how something performs in peak season and what its efficiency ratings are. Even though the system is a smaller physical footprint, as you can see, it gets, because it's an inverter, it's going to get an 18 SEER 2 rating. So it has a higher uh, SEER rating. So it's a more efficient system. And one of the things, in my opinion, between these single stage, you know, systems, all these basic, you know, 16 SEER, 15 SEER, and I think this is their, okay, that's a 15 SEER too. There's not going to be much change between those two. You're not going to notice a huge comfort increase in any of these comfort lineup products. But once you jump to an inverter, it's a night and day system. And even going to a two stage system will be kind of an upgrade. But for a lot of people, when we're pricing these systems out, a lot of times the inverters are almost the same. These side discharge systems, a lot of times are almost the same price as a two stage system, or they're pretty close to where it makes sense to just go for an inverter because you're getting a best bang for your buck, super quiet system. It's quieter because it ramps up on a continuum versus opposed to coming on in one or two stages. And the other benefit that I really like about these inverters, and, and one of the things that's true for both that particular model, the 38 Mira, as well as the Infinity series heat pumps, is that those come with what's called electronic expansion valve or the, the capability of integrating it in with a communicating system where you have an electronic expansion valve. And what that is, is in your air conditioner, you basically have two components. You have the outdoor unit, which is the box we all think of when we think of the, you know, air conditioner outside, like this guy on the screen right here. But we also have an indoor air handler or an indoor, you know, furnace with a coil that makes up your indoor air handler. And one of the things that we talk about a lot is that when you get a system, you know, most of the comfort factor really comes from how the indoor air handler behaves and performs because if the condenser outside is really quiet, that's going to be nice, especially if you're outside in the summer. But inside, if it's, you know, your fan blasts onto 100% right away and it's very loud, that's going to be something that is a lot less 
comfortable. And so it's the reason these variable speed systems are nice is because they're communicating and because they have an electronic expansion valve, what happens is you pair them with a variable speed blower inside that ramps up and down the same way and at the same rate that your condenser is ramping up and down the compressor outside. And what that does is that makes it so things are quiet inside and you're pinpointing the amount of refrigerant that's going into your indoor coil. So every system, just to show you what an evaporator coil looks like, every system has an evaporator coil at their indoor unit and it looks something like this. So if we go and we search a indoor coil, this is basically what's on the inside of your indoor unit and this right here is a thermostatic expansion valve. That's like the analog version of what I'm talking about which is an electronic expansion valve. And so if we go up here and search evaporator coil EXV, there might be something with an EXV attached to it. Let's see, is this an electronic expansion valve? I can't tell from the picture. I don't think so. But bottom line is it's a an electronic expansion valve basically has a that one I can't I can't tell from the picture. I'm trying to see and I'm looking at these. These are small thumbnails. This looks like an electronic expansion. No, no, that it's not. Normally you'll have a, a black TXV inside, and that's an indicator of because it's encased and it's it's a little electronic device versus that TXV. This almost looks like like one, but I can't quite tell from the picture, no. And so basically what happens is the difference, I can't believe I'm having that hard of a time pulling up electronic expansion valve. Basically what that does is that meters the flow of refrigerant in a way that pinpoints it. So when you look at these, you know, this, because it has an electronic component to it, there's basically a few wires that are going to that unit and it's maximizing the efficiency by pinpointing just a precise amount of refrigerant to release into that coil. And so when it first kicks on, it's running at, you know, 20% of its actual capacity and it really starts to ramp up slowly. And that electronic expansion valve knows to open just ever so slightly and release that amount of refrigerant into the coil. And it makes for just a very quiet system. And it's one of my favorite features of the system we sell a lot of is the Daikin Fit that's made by, you know, Daikin. And it's very similar to this Carrier 38 Mira that I just showed you right here, the side discharge system. But any of these inverter products are going to have that feature. It just makes for a more comfortable, quieter system. Now, let's talk about whether or not you need any of this stuff and what's the right system for you. And before we do that, if you haven't done so already, please make sure you smash that like button and consider subscribing to the channel. Again, if you haven't done so already, you've gotten a value from this content so far. But do you need this Infinity Series? Do you need a, an inverter? Should you just get a basic single stage? Short answer is really, it depends, right? And what I always tell people when they're picking out a system for their home is it's not really a one size fits all approach. If you have a small 600 square foot you know, studio apartment that is in coastal Southern California where the weather is really nice and you only run the system a few months out of the year or a few weeks out of the year when it's really hot, depending on, you know, like I said, where you live, then I don't know that I would go for the inverter system unless it's something where the condenser is going to be on your patio and it's going to be noisier. And so maybe you might say, oh, you know, I see the benefit in going for an inverter system like the, you know, this compact 38 Mira because it's going to give you more comfort. It's going to be super quiet and it's going to be space saving because you're, you know, in a condo or something and you have that condenser on your patio. And so it's something where there's a benefit to it. But from an efficiency perspective, there's really no benefit because you're not going to run that system that often, right? If you're running a system two weeks out of the year, which in certain very moderate climates, I know a lot of people that are like that, where they don't run the system that often. And if that's you, you really don't need to go all out and get the fanciest system. You could probably get by with a single stage system. However, if comfort's important to you and you want it for the reasons that, like I said, maybe you need a space saving condenser, it might make sense to get something that's a little bit more compact. Now, anytime someone that I talk to is considering a two stage system, we almost always look at the price benefit of a two stage versus a variable speed system and they're usually neck and neck and sometimes the two stage is actually more because oftentimes there's more rebates available on, or tax credits available on some of the inverters and so it kind of just make more sense to get the inverter because it's if you're already going to spend a little bit more than you would on a single stage system and it's the exact same price or even cheaper to get the inverter then just get the inverter because you're getting a better system for the same price now some people will say well yeah Howard but inverters are more expensive to repair although this is true the 
life cycle on them is the same as the other equipment. So you're not, if you're worried about a repair or a repair cost 10 years from now, I think you would still be saving money in the long run. If you're going to be in this house for 10 years, I guarantee you energy costs over the course of those years are probably, you're going to be saving more money, even if you're guaranteed had to replace the inverter board, which can be expensive in 10 years, it's still going to be cheaper all in all to run that system for the next 10 years. If you're in a climate that dictates that. Now, if you're in a climate that, like I said, is like coastal Southern California, where you only run that thing two weeks out of the year. The other thing to consider is that although you don't run it that often, it might, the coastal breeze, you know, will cause that to wear out quicker, but it's also going to last a lot. And that's because of the salt in the air. But a lot of these, all these systems are sprayed with like corrosion inhibitors to prevent that sort of thing. The bottom line is that system will still probably last 20, maybe even 30 years or more because you're just in a climate where you're not using it that often. And so it doesn't really matter as much. I mean, I've seen systems that just last a very long time in moderate climates. If you're in a market like Phoenix, Arizona or Houston, Texas, where you might get 10 years, you might get 15 years out of your system. And that's normal and understandable because it's 120 degrees outside and it is hot and your system just heats up and, you know, takes a lot of abuse and it runs six or seven or eight months out of the year, especially if there's a humidity removal component that you have to consider, then I would almost always push you you're, to get the higher efficiency equipment just because you're going to save that money from an efficiency perspective. And so then even if something is more expensive to repair in the future, it's actually not because it's cheaper to run along the way. And inverters proven, they do reduce your electric bills. You are going to be saving. If you compare a single stage, let's say 13 seer system with an 18 seer inverter, you're probably saving anywhere between 30 and 50% on your energy bill because of how that system ramps up and down. And depending on your electric grid connection charges, because there's different fees that actually go into making up your bill. And that's where that variability is going to come. But that's why it's important to really look at the big picture of how long are you going to be in the home? Do you have a high efficiency system currently? Or in addition to how long you plan on staying in the home, it's one of those things where what are you trying to accomplish? Are there ex extra is more comfort something that's really important to you? Because if it is, then you might consider one of those other options. And if it's not, there's nothing wrong with going with a more basic system that's going to be just as reliable, not going to be as efficient, not going to be as quiet, but you're still going to be able to have a new system. It's going to meet your needs and it's more important to get the right system for your home instead of spending a bunch of money on stuff that you don't need or that you're not going to even appreciate. And I know some people will disagree with me on that, but that's just my two cents. And again, that's why it's not, I don't have a one size fits all approach to HVAC. I think you really need to look at the situation, what's important to each individual and their specific plans. And that's kind of how we go about consulting and telling people which, you know, sis or helping people figure out which system is actually going to be best for their specific situation. And if you happen to be in one of the areas we service, like Denver, Colorado, or Phoenix, Arizona, you can actually schedule an appointment with us for free. We come out for free for all first time customers, whether that's for a service call or annual maintenance, or if you're just looking for an estimate for system replacement. And there's actually a link in the description below where you can actually schedule online at your convenience, as well as an up to date list of the cities and states that we service. So you can stay up to date when we start servicing your Metro. So hopefully you found this content helpful. And if so, please uh, smash that like button for the algorithm and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. And as promised earlier, there's a few videos popping up on the screen that talk about heat pump efficiency ratings, as well as a few videos that YouTube thinks you should watch. So make sure you check those out if you haven't done so already, and we will catch you on the next episode.